and welcome to the Read All Over show presented by Lit Carnivale and me, your host, Toy Thomas, author, blogger, and reading advocate. I am so excited to share today's guest with you. Anne Peyton believes there's always another out there adventure for her. Let's meet Anne Peyton. All right, I am so excited to um, have a sit down chat with you today. Um, and go ahead and tell the people a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, hi, Toy. Thank you for having me. I uh, am a fifth generation Colorado native. Um, I'm married. I have three children and four grandchildren. When people think of Colorado, they think of mountains, but I'm on the prairie. But when I was growing up, I was able to go to my grandparents' ranch a lot, and I really developed a, a deep love of nature. So I was really excited to be able to work in a science lab. There was so much to be learned there from all of the, the different connotations of nature. <laughs> While I was there, I started uh, helping with their lab manuals and whatnot. And I enjoyed writing so much that I started freelance travel writing in my spare time, nice. which was a lot of fun. And uh, that led me to write a novel called Rocky Mountain Walkabout, which led me to give uh, creative writing seminars on cruise ships. And that was really crazy wonderful. <laughs> so then I started working on that more to give lectures about sea themed uh, different things about the ocean. And uh, then I ended up finishing the novel that I started in the lab. It was, the lab was so inspiring with the creepy things that were in there. <laughs> and uh, it was kind of a labyrinth with secret passages in the closets. So I, I just, I had to write a mystery novel about it. And it took a long time to get my mile high lab rat through the maze, but here it is. <laughs> I finally got it out there and I'm nice. so excited that you're going to help me get the word out. Yes, I saw your, um, your blog tour for it and I was like, this looks really fun. And so I took a chance and reached out and I'm, I'm very excited to be diving into that. <laughs> Great, great. So, sure appreciate it. Yeah, so before we get to that, um, a little bit of background. The reason why I started doing this whole thing is because I'm an avid reader and I'm an advocate for reading. I feel like everybody should read more. So I always start out with a few questions that I call on the bookshelf where I talk about you as a reader. So just a, based a little bit on what you've already told me, I think this is going to be fun. <laughs> So my first question is, was there a particular book or something that you read that helped inspire you to want to write that first book? Oh, you know, of course, I started reading early on before I even remember, but uh, I, I was really into Nancy Drew uh, and loved mysteries all along. I felt like that there was a conversation. All these authors were talking to me and I wanted to participate. So I think that's what lured me into to writing the book. Nice. I like that answer. <laughs> um, going back to your childhood, you mentioned Nancy Drew. Is there a particular, either a book from your childhood or maybe even a book now a children's book that kind of speaks to you or stands out? Oh, not so much from my childhood. I remember reading to my kids and some of those books really got me. There was Dory the Witch. You know, Dory went up the stairs and Gink went with her. And uh, Let's see. Shoot, there are so many wonderful children's books, but they're not coming up right now. Of course, uh, oh, shoot, 
the Hobbit, not so much childhood, but it, it was something I read when I was younger. And wow, did that ever grab me? Yeah, yeah. No, I like to ask questions like that just because I feel like sometimes in our society, we have this great love of reading when we're younger and we sometimes can you know, move away from that as we get older. So remembering those books that got us excited when we were younger is sometimes important, you know? Oh, sure. <laughs> All right. So I actually want to move into the next section. Um, this is what I call the open book where I kind of get to know a little bit about you as a writer. And I think it's so interesting that you worked in a lab and it inspired you to like write. So I guess my question for this is, I, and again, I've never worked in a lab, so I'm curious. I have a feeling that working in a lab and writing on a book are very different, but did something from that laboratory experience help you with your writing process? Hmm. I had 20 years of experience in, in working in the lab. So wow, did I ever learn a lot in the lab. One thing that that comes to mind is uh, there was a problem I was trying to solve uh, and it was kind of a simple problem, but I never came up with just the right way to, to handle it. And then one day I said it out loud, the, the problem, how can I do thus and such? And because I said it out loud, the answer came right now. <laughs> and that was something I talked about in my creative writing uh, was that we, we, we have different ways of responding according to how we approach our brain. Mm -hmm. My example for that was that my husband would hog the covers. And when I pulled on the covers, he would uh, pull back and really fight me. But if I talked to him, talked to the, you know, the literate side of his brain instead of the, the uh, ancient lizard brain, <laughs> well, he'd just give me covers. Right. So, uh, yeah, that's a, a big thing with writing is solving those problems and finding other ways to access the pertinent parts of the brain. I love that. That's great. <laughs> so I'm also wondering, um, just again, I'm fascinated by this. Every writer has like a different style and you know, your approach to writing. I, I, you know, talk to some different writers who they, you know, write everything out in like a notebook first and then they, you know, move it to their computer. I'm one of those tech writers who, if I try to write it out, it would be awful. I just use my computer. Now we've got these kids nowadays who are writing everything on their iPhones and their iPads. So my question to you is when you are drafting, do you just use paper? Do you use technology? Do you go back and forth? What does that look like for you? I, I do, yeah, just wherever I am, if the thought comes at me and uh, yeah, if a lot of times if I sit down and, and I'm yeah, forcing myself to, to write something, it, it's not coming. <laughs> I have to walk away and, and let my brain work on its own speed. Walking is a great way for me to come up with ideas and develop ideas. And so then I'm trying to figure out how to record this on my phone so I don't forget it before I get home. But uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny. I noticed when I am writing and coming up with ideas that if I record the idea, if I write it down right away, then my brain will say, oh, she wants this. I'll keep sending stuff. Whereas if I go and do something else and, and yeah the brain says oh not interested <laughs> okay that's cool so it sounds like you are kind of embracing like you'll write things down by hand but you'll also record things on your phone so you seem to be using a little bit of you know whatever is available to help that creativity flow oh absolutely yes i like that <laughs> 
All right, so now I want to talk more about just your work itself because like I said, I saw the um, book tour for the Mile How Rat and that's what um, I was, I was like, I want to I wanna know more about this. So my first question is, what inspired you? Like what caused you to want to write that book? Okay. Um, I mentioned earlier how the labs were laid out. They all kind of run into the the prep lab, that's where I worked to get things ready for the various labs that were coming up. And so, you know, it just felt kind of, oh, mysterious, I guess, okay. to, to be walking through those labs and you can pop into this one, pop into that one. And then there were long closets between the labs with doors on either side. So it's kind of a secret passage. We, we once had a, a drill where they had a shooter come in. You know, of course, he wasn't really shooting. Right. But uh, one of the work studies obviously had the same thought I did. He said, well, he'd never find us <laughs> because we, we had all these little doors and and secret passages and so on. So yeah, that, and there were so many things that, uh, that were fascinating to me in the lab. One day, an instructor came in and said, the painted ladies are migrating. And I, I thought, what? what? <laughs> but he was talking about butterflies. Oh. And he, he, painted ladies are fascinating butterflies when you go looking into them. So lots of things like that gave me interesting things to toss into the book as, as background, give it a, a real rich tapestry of nature and science and Colorado. <laughs> So I want to know more about the book without giving too much away. I do know that it's like a workplace mystery. So let's get into that a little bit more without giving some spoilers. Okay. Uh, Macy is the lab rat and she is a quirky nature lover, just out of college, crazy excited to be running a lab, but Instruments go missing, chemicals attack, Macy gets blamed. So a stalker is the only one watching her back when the lab goes ballistic. That's an incredible premise. <laughs> well, I'm definitely, um, like I said, I was, I was already like, when I saw the, the blog tour for the book, was already interested in it. And um, I've picked up my copy and I wanted to read it, but I wanted to do this interview first. So I'm very excited about reading Mile High, La Mile High Lab Rat. Um, I, I did want to talk a little bit, though. You have some other books that you've done. Tell me a little bit about those. Okay. When I was freelance travel writing, I did a lot of research about Colorado and I was always really excited about all this cool information I was coming up with. And I could only use a little bit of it in my articles. And I came up with the idea of writing a novel and you know, putting all this wonderful stuff in the novel. So that's when I came up with Rocky Mountain Walkabout but of course, I get into Rocky Mountain Walkabout and the plot takes off and there's no time to stop and say, oh, but did you know that Cripple Creek was whatever it was? So anyway, um, the, the book turned out to be a lot of fun. I, I don't ever want anybody going to sleep on my books. So <laughs> it, it charges hard through there and uh, there's some fun Colorado stuff and a lot of uh, exciting adventure. It's a travel adventure novel. And what's the basic premise of it? Like, is it um, the particular character going through some kind of challenge in that book? 
this is a, a Boston preschool teacher who gets empty nest restlessness and uh, she decides she's gonna go to Colorado. She climbs Pikes Peak, rafts the Royal Gorge, uh, gets involved in a, a cattle drive. And then her coworkers in the cattle drive have immigration issues. So she gets swept up in a raid and ends up in Mexico <laughs> trying to get back across the border. So yeah, it, it's a wild one. Yeah, that is quite an adventure. <laughs> well, it definitely sounds like you you have this, I, I love the little quote that you gave me at the beginning. It's absolutely right that you um, are waiting for this next out there adventure to come around. So I, that definitely seems to speak to the work that you that you do. It's awesome. <laughs> I want to move into the next part of the interview. This is just what I call the silly section. And so I'm going to ask you some questions. Some of it's about your work. Some of it's just about you. But I wanted to first touch on something that you mentioned earlier. And I did, um, I think I saw this in some of the bio information. You um, have done presentations on a cruise ship. <laughs> You're doing yeah. like creative writing. What exactly was that like? What, who, who takes creative writing on a cruise ship. <laughs> I just want to know more about this. Oh, okay. There's a lot to write about, especially if you, you keep a journal on a cruise ship. There's so much to record. And uh, of course, readers love, <laughs> love to learn more about how to create um, the wonderful things that they read. So, I, uh, I would do a few things to inspire, give some hints, and then they would write what they wanted to write. Uh, I usually had a prompt, but they didn't necessarily go with the prompt. And then anyone who wanted to could share uh, what they had written. And wow, that is a fabulous way to get to know people. I bet. <laughs> we, we, you know, we share what's important to us, that the writing that we're doing, and we get to bonded on a much deeper level so much faster than you would talking to somebody next to you about the weather or whatever. I didn't realize how strongly they were bonding with me. Uh, you know, I talked about how important it is to include emotion. And I shared some emotional stories with them. When I got to the end of the cruise, one of the, the people who had been attending the seminar came up and said, you were the highlight of my cruise. Oh, that's wonderful. And that blew me away so far that I couldn't believe she'd actually said it. I didn't believe it until she said it again later. So that was, oh man, did that ever grab me. And, and other people were, were talking about uh, the daughter that I had, had mentioned mm -hmm. several times and, and how they related to the middle kid syndrome. Um, one of the, the women who apparently had never done any reading told me she was going to miss me and I didn't even know who she was. So you can imagine what a, how strongly hooked I was for teaching creative writing on cruise ships. Yeah. Sadly, the cruise ships no longer want creative writing instructors. Yeah. So now that's why I'm getting into these sea themed lectures, which also turned out to be a lot of fun. That's cool. I like that. So you've worked in a lab and you've done creative writing on cruise ships. What do you think would be the most like outrageous or odd place for you to do like a lecture or something like that? Like if someone was like came up to you and said, I want you to do a lecture here and you'd have to think about it because it's out there. Like what would be too out there for you? Wow. You got me there. Now I spent a lot of time looking for places to, to give 
my talk so I could practice it and be very comfortable with it. And I often thought, you know, I, I, will, I will talk to anyone, I go down there on whatever uh, sad street <laughs> there is and, and talk to drunks on the sidewalk. Uh, I really would rather not be that. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose uh, that would be one way out there thing. Yeah, I could. I, that would. I think that would be tough to try to be on a podium and give a lecture, and all of your people are passed out on the sidewalk. <laughs> that would be tough. <laughs> all right. So one more, just kind of fun question. Um, you know, I do this interview and I'm, you know, I'm interviewing a writer and of course we're also readers, but sometimes I like to know some other, you know, things about you aside from, you know, the creativity and, and enjoyment you get from writing and reading. Do you prefer movies or TV and why? I, I definitely prefer movies. It seems like they put a lot more effort into the movie making just this piece right mm -hmm. tv so often they they have good ideas at first and then you know the ideas kind of get tired they run a rerun the same yeah. old stuff and yeah they, they put a lot more creative energy i think into movies okay cool all right, well, we've actually come to the end of our interview. <laughs> that was, I really enjoyed that. I'm very excited about reading Mile High Lab Rat. Um, so why don't you go ahead and just tell the viewers where they can find you or your work online. I uh, have a blog called Breathtake Byways. I do a lot of traveling and I like to blog about the different places I travel. So. Yes, it's, it's a fun blog, breathtakebyways.com. Very nice. All right, so um, for those of you who stick around for the credits, I always have fun, something fun to share there. And um, Anne has some exclusive content for my Patreon subscribers. So until next time, everyone, stay safe, be blessed, and have fun reading. Thank you.